Okay, I think we'll get started. Again, thank you for joining us for today's Michael Davis e-lecture. The Center for Health Administration Studies is continuing to attempt to make the latest health and research topics available to as many people as possible. In a moment, I'll hand over the webinar mic to GFAP faculty director and SSA professor Colleen Grogan to offer brief remarks and to provide an introduction of today's presenter, Assistant Professor of Public Health Sciences in the Biological Sciences Division at the University of Chicago, Prachi Sangavi. As a reminder, we'll be fielding questions after today's presentation. Please feel free to add your questions to the Q&A pane as the presentation's being presented. Um, I will open the chat feature following the presentation to allow for additional questions. A copy of today's PowerPoint will be available on the CHAS website at uh, chaz.uchicago.edu and a recording of today's webinar will be available on the CHAS website as well. Dr. Grogan will now introduce today's speaker. Okay, thanks Keith. Um, hello everybody. Thanks so much for joining us um, for the Davis Lectureship. Um, it's my great pleasure to introduce Prachi Sangavi here um, to join us for this webinar. Um, uh, Prachi is, as Keith already told us, she's an assistant professor in public health sciences here at the University of Chicago. Um, she's a health policy researcher who uses empirical methods to study comparative effectiveness of health services, um, quality care measurement, and population health. Her research projects um, are very interesting and quite um, and, and somewhat diverse. Um, she has a project on the effect of ambulatory or ambulance type transport distance and hospital quality on outcomes after out of hospital med medical measurement. Um, she has a project which she's going to share with us today on nursing home reported data for patient safety and quality of care measurements. Um, she has another research project on the association between physician provision of low value care and their patients reported experiences. And finally, she has a really interesting project that we were just talking about on the health effects of hydraulic fracturing um, or fracking really for natural oil and gas. Um, really important work and um, I'm very excited to um, hear uh, what she's going to present to us today. Um, evidently, Prachi's family is here with us as well. So hello to family members and um, uh, feel free to put um, questions in the chat. Um, maybe you wanna uh, provide some softball questions for Prachi um, uh, since she's a family member. <laughs> but welcome everybody to participate via the chat when, um, when we open it up. So with that, I'll turn it over to Prachi. Thanks, Colleen. Um, so what I want to talk about today is uh, the quality or the accuracy of reporting of one particular measure that is on nursing home compare, and that is the measure for uh, major injury falls. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off by telling you about what nursing home compare is. And then I want to tell you about our research objective, which was to assess the accuracy of that major injury falls measure. And then I'll tell you about our data sets and our analysis, and I'll give you the results uh, as I go through the analysis and not you know, at the end. Um, and then I'll end with some conclusions and policy implications. So what is Nursing Home Compare? So Nursing Home Compare is a website essentially that is run by the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, uh, which is the federal government. And if you go to that website, uh, it, a lot of people use it to inform their decisions for choosing their nursing home. So if you go to that website, um, like I did here, uh, you can put in a zip code or a city. And when you do that, uh, I put in Atlanta, Georgia here in this example, and I got these 55 results. So these are nursing homes that are um, in that city. And what it does is uh, here you see just the top three uh, nursing homes. And what it does is it gives you the overall rating from one to five stars, as well as ratings within these specific domains, which are health inspections, staffing, and quality measures. If you look at this first example here, you'll see that this nursing home has two stars on the health inspections, two stars on staffing, five stars on quality measures, 
And that probably is playing a role in bumping its overall rating up to three stars instead of just being two stars. So what we're gonna focus on today is this uh, quality measures column. And if this was a live page and I were to click on this quality measures um, uh, section here, it would then take me to this page that you see on your right. And you can see here we have again that same nursing home, uh, the same five star quality measures overall rating. And below this, what you have are specific quality measures. And so, for example, you have the number of outpatient emergency department visits for 1,000 long stay resident days, or you have percentage of long stay residents who got an antipsychotic medication. The one we're gonna focus on is this one, and that is percentage of long stay residents experiencing one or more falls with major injury. And we're gonna look at not just long stay, but also short stay residents. So this is, this is our focus today. Now you might be wondering, why are we talking about this and why do we need to really uh, look at this measure more carefully? So it's been known and been of concern to researchers and policymakers um, for, for quite some time that the data behind those quality measures are actually self-reported by the nursing homes. So this uh, has been known in that community that works on these issues, but this became a big deal in the public domain. And also it's how it got to my attention uh, when the New York Times did an investigative uh, report. So this is, these are the headlines from a series of articles that the New York Times wrote on, uh, nursing, on, this, on nursing home compare. And what they did is they essentially uh, looked more carefully at some five-star rated homes and reported on serious deficiencies in those homes. And I highlighted in red here, the words that are kind of key to what we're talking about. So here you can see we have unverified, incomplete and often misleading data. And down here we have uh, the sentence that says the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services acknowledge that its five-star rating system needed work given that it relies heavily on self-reporting. Okay, so this is, this is why we're, we're looking into this more. So what is the self-reported data? Well, it's referred to as the minimum data set, uh, which is not terribly useful uh, term, but that's what it's called. And so we call it MDS for short. And the MDS is uh, full of assessments that are completed for each nursing home resident. And these are essentially, the assessments are surveys. And so there's a survey that's, uh, completed for each resident at admission, at discharge, and then quarterly in between. So there's supposed to be an assessment about every 92, to, at least every 92 days. So this is the top section of that um, assessment, if you were to look at it um, as a form. And if we went further down, then you would get to this section. So that was section A. And if you went further down, you'd get to section J. And section J, uh, 1700, 1800, and 1900 are the questions on falls that we're gonna be looking at uh, today. So if you look at this first top section, which is the J1700, these are questions that are asking about falls that occurred prior to admission to that nursing home. And so it's the history, fall history. J1800 is asking if the individuals had any falls since admission. This is while the person is a resident of the nursing home. And then J1900 is asking about the extent of the injuries sustained in, that, uh, in those falls. And so you can either have no injury, you can have minor injury or major injury. The major injury box down here, so J1900C, is the question that's actually used in that quality measure um, that you saw on the nursing home compare slide uh, a, few, a few slides ago. And um, that measure is, I, I wanna make clear that major injury here is uh, defined by the MDS. So this is how the MDS defines it. For anyone who's more familiar with the injury community, um, this is different from um, major trauma that we might classify as having an injury severity score over 15. So that's, um, that's a different um, criteria than this. We went with the major injury definition that's here because we are assessing the, the MDS. Okay, so so this is this is these are the I'll bring, pull these up again in a in a few minutes, but these are the questions we're really focusing on. Okay, 
So what has other work found when they've tried to look at the MDS uh, to see how it, how it actually performs? So most of the work has been uh, investigations that have been uh, performed over the past decades uh, by the Department of Health and Human Services, Office of uh, the Inspector General, and also by the US uh, Government Accountability Office. And what these have uh, largely do is they compare the MDS uh, assessments to uh, usually medical records for the same individuals. And so as an example of this, in 2014, CMS, uh, the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, did an audit in which they compared the MDS assessments um, of in 25 volunteer nursing homes. So they're volunteer and they had up to 10 patients per home. And what they did is they basically compared the assessments with the uh, medical records for those individuals to see if there was agreement on how severe the fall was. And in 26% of cases, they found uh, disagreement between those two. Now, what's very important that I wanna uh, really draw your attention to here is that in doing this, uh, this audit, they actually started with the assessment data. So anyone whose fall went altogether unreported wouldn't be in their analysis, right? Because they're starting with only those individuals for which a fall was reported on the assessment. And so that's kind of, um, you know, not the best way to do a validation because you're kind of starting with the source that you're trying to validate. There's also been um, academic work that's tried to uh, look at the, the uh, quality of the MDS reporting. Um, I don't know of any studies that have actually looked at it at the patient level uh, the way our paper does, um, but there have been um, really interesting studies that have tried to see how well uh, measures based on the MDS correlate with other measures of quality of care um, and outcomes that we, that we uh, like to look at, such as readmission rates to hospital readmission rates uh, or death. And there was a study uh, in JAMA by Newman et al. Um, that was uh, done recently where they were unable to actually find uh, consistent associations between these measures. Okay, so hopefully at this point, you have a good sense of what nursing home compare is and why we're um, interested in, in checking how, how accurate it's reporting is. So our objective was to assess uh, the accuracy of this one uh, measure. So very clearly, our, gen our broad research question, and I'll lay out some more uh, specific questions in a moment, um, but our broad research question was, how accurately do nursing homes report major injury falls on the minimum data set? And everything I'm about to um, describe was uh, published in a paper earlier this year in health services research. Okay, so this is section J again, just in case between the first time you saw this and you know this time, it makes a little more sense. So just as a reminder, um, this section up here is on history of falls. This section up here, down here, is on just asking, you know, have you had a fall since admission or not, or has this individual rather, and then uh, how severe was that fall? Okay. All right. So now, why are we focusing on falls? There's a few good reasons for that. So falls are a leading cause of death among older adults, but even if an individual doesn't die, uh, the fall can lead to very serious morbidities. It is also considered um, a relatively preventable outcome. So it's something that we can actually do something about to reduce the occurrence of. Doesn't mean that every fall can be prevented, but a lot can be done to reduce the occurrence of falls. And that's the reason why it's considered an important patient safety measure, because it's something you can actually do something about. My own view was when I am starting to um, figure out which of these uh, quality measures to start assessing, uh, was that falls are likely easier to both identify um, as events because they are kind of these distinct acute events that occur, and also therefore easier to record. So in other words, compared with other measures that are based on infections or um, pressure ulcers that might require staging, uh, falls seem like a somewhat easier uh, health event to, to try to have to identify and record. So that's why we decided to start with falls. So our validation source, uh, which I'll describe in a little more detail um, in a bit, is uh, the Medicare fee-for-service claims. So what does that mean? So Medicare uh, 
so when a when a Medicare beneficiary goes to visit a healthcare provider, uh, that healthcare provider, in order to get paid, uh, submits a claim to CMS. And we have at the University of Chicago uh, a very large, vast quantity of these claims. So we have 100% of claims for um, beneficiaries of Medicare and Medicaid for many, many years. And so, um, while well, so what we do is we use the Medicare uh, hospital admission claims to identify falls that have occurred. And the idea here is that we may not observe every single fall that occurred, right? The whole universe of falls, because uh, it, you know, if a person, for example, never even made it to the hospital, right? Uh, or they had a minor fall that didn't lead to a hospital visit, uh, we're not gonna know about it, but that's okay. Um, our goal was to identify a pool of falls that we could be pretty certain the nursing home uh, should have reported on. And so that's what our, um, that's what our validation source is. So everyone that we look at is someone who was admitted to the hospital for a fall. That was the primary reason they were admitted. They also had other injuries that lined up with having had a major injury fall. And we also kept close um, bookkeeping to make sure that this individual came from the nursing home, was discharged from the nursing home to go to the hospital and was admitted to the hospital and then went back to the same hospital. So. Um, what we end up with is a pool that, of falls that's fairly conservative um, in terms of uh, what we would expect for the nursing home to report on. Okay, so that's our validation source, and I'll get back to that in just a moment. But let me refine the research questions a little further first. So our first question was, how accurately do nursing homes report claims identified major injury falls? on the minimum data set, that is falls that we identify in the, in the hospital admission claims. To what extent does that reporting vary by race? So does race matter in this, in this reporting? And how well do nursing home uh, claims-based fall rates? So we actually created um, fall rates that are based on the claims. So these are these you know, more extreme kind of um, falls that led to an admission. If we were to uh, create, when we created the claim space fall rate, we wanted to know how well that correlates with MDS-based um, nursing home compare measures. So these were the three questions that we looked into that I'm gonna uh, show you what we found on. So those are our, our research uh, objectives. So let me just for one slide tell you about the data sets that we used and then we can get into analysis. So, uh, as I've mentioned, we used um, Medicare claims. And so more specifically, for 2011 to 2015, we had 100% of Medicare fee-for-service beneficiaries. So these are people on traditional or original Medicare, that's part A and part B, not part C. And we have um, their, all of their hospital admission claims, which give us information on their diagnoses. So why were they, uh, why did they go to the hospital? as well as their admission and discharge dates. And then we also have a whole host of other information on these individuals, uh, such as their enrollment information and their demographic information. So this is identifiable uh, data. And we also have for 100% of nursing home residents, their MDS assessments for the same years. Now this of course includes individuals who are not just Medicare beneficiaries, but maybe um, uh, you know, maybe uh, paying privately or have, you know, some other insurance mechanism for paying. Um, but our interest is in the overlap with the Medicare beneficiaries. And so for these individuals, we have all their assessments. So we have their entry, admission assessments, their discharge, as well as those quarterly assessments. We also use information on nursing home facility characteristics. So these come from um, data sets that are called CASPER and LTC Focus, which is put together by Brown University. And then we have the publicly available nursing home compare measures, um, which uh, you've seen some of already. So this was the data that we used to, to look at this. Okay, so let's get into uh, analysis. So this first flow chart, um, or these flow charts rather, are uh, to walk us through the reporting process for, from the nursing home standpoint, okay? And in the interest of time, and because we're on Zoom and it might be hard to focus, um, 
I'm going to just focus on this side over here. So these are, this is the flow chart for uh, when a person falls during nursing home residency. So this is that J1800, 1900 questions. And on this side over here, which I'm not gonna quite go through is um, the flow chart for when an individual um, has fallen, uh, has had a fall prior to their um, admission to the nursing home. Okay, so in short, this is, uh, this is largely based on information that um, is essentially like these secondary sources that the nursing home um, would get information from. So it could be the family or the individual themselves or their prior medical records. So on this side, what we have is that uh, if an individual falls, um, the first question might be whether uh, the person should be evaluated in the hospital or not. And if the answer is yes, and if the person ends up having a stay that's over 24 hours, which is probably the case in, in the vast majority of admissions, um, then one would uh, complete that J1800 question and identify the severity of the fall through J1900 um, on a discharge assessment. Okay, so that is the assessment that the nursing home would submit as the individual is getting um, discharged from the nursing home in order to get admitted to the hospital. If they uh, answer no to these, then they end up still having to answer those questions, but they don't have to do it necessarily on the discharge assessment. They can actually do it on the next MDS assessment. Okay, so that's, that's kind of the process um, for reporting. This next flow chart is uh, telling you about how we actually merged these two data sets together to, uh, to try to see what reporting looks like. And I'm going to, again, just focus on uh, one side of this flow chart over here. Um, on this side is, are the cases where uh, the fall occurred prior to nursing home admission. Okay, so just to kind of simplify this, um, I'm gonna focus over here. So what happens? So we start off with all Medicare admission claims from uh, 2011 to 15. So this is for anyone, not just people who are nursing home residents. We then narrow it down to those individuals who have falls as a primary, a fall as a primary diagnosis. And then we link with the MDS assessments to identify individuals who were discharged from, the, from a nursing home to go to the hospital and have their discharge date from the nursing home and the admission date for the hospital. Um, I believe it was like within a day. And so once we do that, we uh, narrow this down further. So the remainder of these individuals, um, some of them might go over here, some of them might go here, but um, some of these are just not nursing home residents, right? So that's what these guys are. So that's why the number drops. Okay, so now we're over here. And the next steps we took were really to just um, keep this kind of as tight as possible so that we really have a pool that, you know, there's. Uh, where we really expect the nursing home to report in. So we take this group over here. So these are individuals who've had a fall um, and have an admission for this, for, as it was a primary uh, diagnosis of fall. They came from a nursing home. We then require them to return to a nursing home and then return to the same nursing home and then also have sustained uh, major injuries. So this over here, this 150,828 patients, uh, those are the individuals for which we're um, very certain the nursing home should have reported a fall for. Okay, so that's that's kind of our main pool that we're looking at. All these other groups are also analyzed and assessed in, 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 you know, in the next tables, but we're gonna focus here. Okay. So now uh, this is just a brief aside for, for anyone who's interested in how we identified um, falls. So falls are of course identified using extern ICD-9 CM external cause codes. And for anyone who's uh, interested, external cause code reporting is actually really high quality um, in the years of our data. So it's over 90% for all injury cases. Okay, so it's, it works really well. Okay, so um, before we you know get to some results. Let me just tell you very briefly about some of the other measures that we created. So uh, we have measures that were at the individual level as well as at the nursing home level. At the individual level, we have dual status, that is whether they're dually enrolled in Medicare and Medicaid. 
we have an indicator for individuals that are short stay residents versus long stay. And the difference there is really um, a very much a policy interest. And the reason is because short stay residents are often um, staying at nursing homes for post acute care, and that's often paid for by Medicare. And long stay residents are often um, covered by Medicaid, and they also are um, people who actually live in the nursing home. So there are uh, different payers involved as well as different populations. So we then have our definition from uh, major injury based on the MDS definition. We also created injury severity scores um, and comorbidity scores. And then at the nursing home level, we have a uh, we have the size of the nursing home, but we also have uh, nursing home level measures of duals and, and race. Okay, so this is our first table of, of results. So um, let me first orient you with this table. So up top, we of course have these numbers, which we'll get to, but on the bottom, I just have the same uh, survey questions or the assessment questions uh, laid out. So in case you've um, forgotten what these it, you know, items refer to, you have them. Remember J1900C was the main question on uh, major injuries. Okay, so if we go back up here, we first on this left side of, the, of this table, we have our denominators. So this is how many individuals were in, um, in our data that will fall in the short stay category versus long stay and white. And then we have this very unfortunate category of non-white where everybody who's not white is grouped. Um, and that's uh, on the next uh, slide or two, uh, we do have this broken out by individual races, but there was just so much similarity. Um, and for clarity, we just kind of, I went ahead and grouped these. Okay, so um, what you'll see over here then are the reporting rates. So this is of the people that we um, believe the nursing home should report on, which is what these denominators are, uh, what portion actually were reported on the MDS. And so this uh, J1900C, that was our major injury question. So remember, these are all cases that we identified as being major injuries. Um, for individuals who are short stay, we find about 49% of falls are reported for white individuals and about 37% if you're not white. And among long stay, uh, it's overall reporting is higher, 65%. Um, but there's still that difference between uh, by race, so 65% versus 51%. And you'll notice one thing that's uh, interesting, which is that J1700A, which is a question that asks about um, fall history, uh, it actually asks about a fall in the, in the month prior to uh, the nursing home admission. The reporting rate's actually pretty high. And that's interesting because this is where the nursing home's relying on secondary sources um, well, uh, from the, to, to determine if the person's had a fall. Whereas here, the individual is actually a resident of their home. So this is, um, this is what we found overall. We then wanted to understand if there were patient level or nursing home level characteristics that were uh, associated with or predictive of the reporting rate for J1900C, which is that, J, uh, which is that major injury question. And so here, what we have is a binary outcome for whether an individual's I in nursing home ends uh, fall was reported or not. And this is a binary outcome, but what I'm gonna show you uh, are results from a linear probability model because it's just so much easier to interpret. Um, however, our paper has a logistic regression, um, which uh, you'll, if you looked at, you would see has uh, very similar results. So we, we did do that check. Um, so this is a multi-level model, oops, this is a multi-level model in which we have uh, nursing home level random effects, we have year fixed effects, and then we have characteristics of individuals and characteristics of nursing homes. The interesting thing that we did that, um, or, or rather the useful thing that we did is we disaggregated the within and between nursing home uh, effects of race as well as dual um, so that the coefficients could be interpreted directly. So the way they're presented on the next page, you can actually um, interpret the individual level effect as being the effect of um, the individual race and the nursing home level effect as being the effect of race at that level. 
Um, we also have separate models for short and long state populations, which is largely for um, from a policy standpoint of, of interest. Okay, so what I have here are results from the from those regression models, and what I'm going what I'm showing you here is just a handful of the characteristics that are in these models. There's a lot of other stuff, some of which is identified over here. Um, what I really want to talk about is race, and so um, that's why that's kind of the main thing that's up here. And I want to interpret the race effects that we that we found. So this over here, uh, this negative 0 0.042 for um, the individual effect of being black as opposed to white can be interpreted as follows. So on average, being black rather than white is associated with a 4.2 percentage point lower probability of the major injury fall getting reported on J1900C, conditioning on the nursing home level race mix. So what that means is if we hold the nursing home level race mix fixed, and all we're doing is switching the individual's race, then being black instead of white means you have a 4.2 percentage point lower probability of your fall getting reported. The other part of it is down here, which is this nursing home level race effect, and that is the uh, this negative 0.251 that I want to interpret for you. So what that says is if we hold a patient's race constant and we instead are increasing the proportion of black residents from zero to one, then that is associated with a 25 percentage point lower probability of having the fall reported. So what that means is, you know, when we, on the first table you saw a couple of slides ago, we saw there was this race effect, right? So if you were not white, you had a uh, lower probability of your, or, or um, you had a smaller proportion of falls reported. But then the next question is, is this about being, um, um, about the nursing home that you live in or your individual race? And what this table shows us is that it's both. So both of these things um, play a role in, in how falls get reported. So this uh, last table here of, of results is where we uh, create claims-based fall rates and look at how those correlate with nursing home compare-based measures. So uh, what we did is we basically took the, uh, the falls that we found in, in our, in our uh, sample of in hospital admissions. So it's the same denominator that we were working with before. And we, uh, did this only for 2014. Okay, so it's the most recent kind of complete year of data that we had. And we uh, took that number and put it over the number of uh, registered residents in each nursing home. So then for each nursing home, we had a fall rate per, per person. And we, you know, multiply by so per 100 uh, residents. And we have that for each nursing home. Okay, and then we took that and we turned that into quintiles. And so that's what these are over here. So these are your quintiles. Now, this first quintile here has uh, the highest uh, fall rate based on our claims. And this down here has the lowest fall rate on claims, this quintile. So this is the mean fall rate in, the, in that quintile. And so we then looked at the percent of nursing homes with four or five star ratings overall, and then within the quality measure rating. And what you observe is that um, there's, there, there is like a slight change here, um, which doesn't quite go in the direction you would want. So about 53% of nursing homes that seem to have um, the most falls um, have a four or five star rating. Um, but then over here, it's 47%. But this might be you know, expected because there's a lot that goes into the overall rating other than this one little fall measure. Um, if we look at the quality measure, uh, you can see that here too, um, a very high proportion of nursing homes have a five, four or five star rating in uh, the quintile that has the most falls based on our claims. And um, this kind of goes more in the direction you would expect in that you have 82% here. However, um, you know, as a whole, again, the fall rating, uh, the actual fall events based on these admissions uh, don't don't really seem to uh, map up well with these. 
The next thing we did is instead of looking at the percent of nursing homes with four or five star ratings, we actually just took the average rating. So the average of um, uh, rating from one to five stars. And we have, um, so we have the overall rating, the quality measure rating, and then the specific MDS measure on major falls, major injury falls. And we looked at the correlation between these uh, claims-based fall rates and these ratings. And the correlation coefficients um, are, are not so great. So uh, over here, we have um, a very small magnitude, but also it goes in the wrong direction. So in, in a direction that you wouldn't expect. So this basically says that having um, more claims-based fall rates is associated with uh, kind of higher overall ratings, right? Um, over here, this uh, is goes in the right direction now, right? So having more claims-based fall rates is um, correlated with a lower quality measure rating, but it's still a very small correlation. And then over here, we have, this also goes actually in the right direction because this is saying that having more claims-based fall rates is, associated, is uh, correlated with having um, a higher major injury fall measure. So that, that is what you would want a positive sign here. However, the magnitude um, is, is, is not, is, um, you know, modest, it's very low. Okay, so, uh, so that's what we find when we compare with nursing home compare. All right, so that's, those are basically our results. And what I wanna do next is just uh, give you some conclusions and policy implications. And then I think we can take questions. So overall, we find substantial underreporting on the major injury falls measure uh, that we looked at. We also found reporting rates were substantially lower for Asians, Blacks, and Hispanics compared with whites, both within nursing homes as well as between nursing homes. There are a few other interesting observations. Um, there are sensitivity analyses uh, in our paper, which uh, show that adding additional assessments, so in the, in the work I showed you, we focused on the discharge assessment to, to see if the fall was reported or not. But if you go ahead and relax that and allow for additional assessments and check if those, you know, does it eventually get reported? Um, it actually doesn't uh, help much. So the rates stay pretty much uh, the same. We, I already pointed this one out, which is that um, it's interesting that the J1700 a question where um, the nursing homes really asking family and looking at medical records for the fall, they actually report over 90% um, in a, kind of across our categories on that measure. One issue that um, might be happening is that the severity classification may be off. So it could be that the nursing home doesn't actually know the severity of the injury when they send the person to the hospital. Um, and it's something that they learn after the hospital actually does an assessment of the person. However, the nursing homes do have um, quite a bit of opportunity to uh, make corrections. And that is something that's supposed to be uh, something they do. This last part um, is, is, is interesting in that, uh, unfortunately, the poor correlation that we see on the, that we saw on the prior, on the page I just showed you before this, the table. Uh, the poor correlation um, says that, so there's under-reporting, but so if every, if all nursing homes were consistently under-reporting, the measure would still be useful for making comparisons, right? So if everyone's kind of under-reporting about the same amount, you can still compare nursing homes. But unfortunately, that correlation tells us that it may not be useful for that either. So nursing homes are not necessarily under-reporting um, at, at the same levels. So in terms of policy implications, um, the source of the under-reporting could be, there could be many things going on. It could be that there are just huge administrative challenges to getting this data in, uh, making it accurate. Um, those corrections I mentioned a minute ago might be really difficult to actually do in practice. So there could be a whole host of reasons why the reporting is as it is. It could also be that there are uh, incentive structures uh, or that the, not that there are, but we know the incentive structures are, um, you know, don't really make you want to report, right? Because this gets publicly reported. Um, and so that could be an issue too. Uh, my own view is that waiting to figure out 
what the problem is, is, is not really an option. I think it's very important to come up with um, good quality measures in the meantime, while we're trying to figure out what's going on with, with, these, with this quality measure, we should have other information that can um, help us monitor uh, nursing home quality of care and patient safety. A lot of the individuals in these homes um, may not have advocates and the public monitoring is very important um, for them. So as next steps, uh, what my group is doing is um, one thing we're doing is we're experimenting with alternate measures that might be that are based on uh, uh, claims, which are from other providers who probably don't have a stake in the nursing homes public reporting. Um, and those types of measures could be used to supplement or in some cases even replace uh, the MDS based measures. And those, of course, wouldn't be complete for all nursing home residents because we wouldn't have information on people who are not Medicare beneficiaries or not Medicaid beneficiaries. Um, however, uh, that would still cover a large part of the population. And uh, those measures may correlate with the quality of care that the uh, other patients are getting or residents. Um, we also are, invest are assessing other MDS-based measures. So we're starting with uh, pressure ulcers, and then we're going to move on to some infections. Um, those things are harder to um, identify in claims, so that's why we started with falls. Um, the last thing here is not something we're quite uh, working on, but would be, I guess, a, um, an option for CMS, and that could be that there could be these model-based corrections um, to these MDS reporting rates, uh, which might be useful. Maybe, I don't know how well it would um, go over for with nursing homes for public reporting, but it could be a useful source for um, targeting auditing. So we could, you know, look at those nursing homes that um, based on models uh, that look like uh, they should have more auditing. So I'm going to stop there. And thank you for listening. Uh, I want to declare that I have no conflicts of interest that are relevant to this work. And this work was supported by and R01 from the Agency for Healthcare Research and Quality. Thank you. All right. Um, thanks so much, Prachi. That was really interesting. Um, looks like we have um, a couple questions um, in the chat. Actually, I know there was some early. Oh, got it. Um, so there's a question from David Innes um, uh, that asks, um, is there evidence that nursing homes do not accept patients with a higher probability of falls? Um, should, I, should I answer that or did sure. you wanna? Okay. Um, uh, I actually don't know. Um, so I have not seen evidence that would suggest the nursing homes um, make decisions like that. I, I, I do believe nursing homes make uh, decisions based on uh, the payer source. So that could be something they're doing, um, but I don't think, I, I don't know of that. Yeah, yeah. I don't know, yeah. Um, David has a couple other questions, but um, I was curious, um, I had a couple questions myself. Um, so I was, I'm interested in your policy um, suggestions and, and kind of policy implications. Mm -hmm. um, and well, I, I thought it was interesting that you talked about doing targeted audits ta mm -hmm. or targeted auditing mm -hmm. and wondered, so for example, you're finding that if you are a nursing home with a relatively high proportion of non-white residents that um, you have a higher probability of, um, of a, f a major fall not being reported. I understood that correctly. Mm -hmm. um, and so would you, would you suggest sort of doing ta targeted auditing on nursing homes that have a high proportion of non-white residents, given yeah. that you know from your study that these nursing homes seem to have, be more likely to have a kind of non-reporting problem? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I don't know. I was what I was thinking about more was um, that. So my understanding is that a lot of auditing currently happens based on MDS reports, 
So uh, the starting point is the MDS. And if an MD, if a nursing home mm. is reporting uh, more events of a certain kind, then that can lead to um, further uh, state inspection. Um, so I was thinking more along the lines of using modeling and random effects um, in, in particular that would allow shrinkage and take into account um, sample size of different nursing homes to, to really get at what those rates might be uh, like more realistically. And then mm -hmm. um, it could be that, uh, you know, I don't know, you have to get creative. So it could be that we work with these claims-based rates and, and use that um, as a starting point. Um, there is, I didn't quite show a plot of what the variation's like, but there's quite a bit of variation across nursing homes um, in, in reporting. So there are nursing homes that do great um, and there are nursing homes that don't. And um, that maybe, uh, as the analysis suggests, there could be um, uh, definitely an effect that's going on at because of the race mix within a nursing home. Um, but I think they're, you know, kind of across the board, you would, you would see problems, but it's not just necessarily based on the nursing home race mix. Right, right, right. Um, I wondered um, what you thought of um, sort of because the, um, like using one of your suggestions was using claims data such as you know how you did the comparison in the first place, right? Mm -hmm. But um, it seems like there's there's a pretty big leg in by the time we get the claims data. It, I wonder if nursing home um, uh, you know administrators or nursing home owners would say, well, the claims data is old now, and we've we've you know improved, or that doesn't reflect our current quality measures. Um, so I just wonder whether it does that come up the timing and what do you think? No, about I mean, that's, that's when you and I get the data. So you and I have a two to three year lag in, in when we get data from CMS, but, um, but CMS has the data. I mean, if you were into, if you were in the virtual, um, research data center in the VRDC, I believe that has like active, like current data, um, so mm -hmm. CMS has those claims. So this was more, um, you know, CMS could create those measures. Um, based on information they have, you know, that's right, kind of very um, right away. It's not, it's, they don't, they shouldn't be experiencing the lag we do. Right, right, right. And so why do you think, why don't they use the claims data if it's, we, we believe it's more accurate than self-reporting? What's the, yeah. yeah. Um, I think there's a handful of things going on. I was actually on a call um, earlier this year with, um, the uh, CMS five-star rating groups that um, that are behind these, these quality measures. And there was a clear kind of divide in the group um, where there, there was one side that was um, advocating for more claims-based measures. The other side seemed to, um, they also were part of creating these measures, um, but were you know, interested in kind of maintaining this, um, the MDS system. And I, I think part of it is that you can't pick up everything in claims um, because something may not lead to an actual, you know, uh, an event that leads to um, a hospital visit. Um, but we are we are actually looking into using physician um, claims for for doing this as well. So I'm not exactly sure, um, you know, what we won't will and won't be able to do with that um, until we look at what, those, what the reporting looks or what the claims look like there. Um, but, um, so I think that's one thing. I think another piece is I think some people might be concerned that if we use the claim based measures, we'd be limited to, uh, Medicare claims. Um, but of course we also have Medicaid claims. And as I was saying, it's not clear to me why the remaining population that's not covered by Medicare or Medicaid would necessarily have very different experiences. Um, but even if they do, that's still a huge chunk of the population. So I think it's, I think it's, um, I, I, I think it's arguably a more objective source because those providers don't have the same interests um, mm -hmm. in nursing home reporting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, that's a good point. Uh, so Tamara um, Konetska has a, a question, um, clearly much more expert than I am on these issues. So yeah. let me just read this out to you. Yeah. Um, one advantage of the MDS-based measures is that Medicare Advantage, which is Medicare's managed care mm -hmm. um, program, 
uh, those managed care residents can be included and increasingly mm -hmm. high proportion. Um, do you have any sense of whether you would find, oops, that question just went away and I was not done asking it. Um, oh, did you under answered. It's under answered. It's under answered. Okay. Yeah, I, the rest of it says, do you have any sense of whether you would find the same discrepancy if you included ME residents, any potential bias by excluding them from the safe measures? Um, so, uh, so first, increasingly, there are Medicare Advantage uh, encounter records, so those could actually be used um, in a similar way. Um, I don't know if we would find um, a difference if we added the MA residents, but I don't really see a reason why, why you would. Um, so I don't know if, um, so I don't know if there's, so the bias piece is, is important to address, which is there isn't necessarily um, a bias in the reporting uh, measure that we come up with because uh, it's essentially a, it's that the denominator is defined as being from a specific population. And so it's more of an external validity question, which is, is our rate externally valid for people who are in Medicare Advantage? It's not really a biased estimate for the individuals within our population. Um, because they are, you know, it, we didn't really have terribly, um, you know, specific exclusions. They, we basically picked Medicare patients who were hospitalized, the primary cause of fall, they had other diagnosis codes indicating a major injury, and they had come from a nursing home and went back to the same nursing home. So the goal was to really select a pool for which there would be little question as to whether the nursing home is supposed to report or not. Um, <laughs> But I don't, I don't have any reason to really believe that reporting would be different um, in the MA group, but maybe it could be. Um, so it could be that different populations have different reporting rates, but the encounter records um, for those are something um, we, we should be getting. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We can look at that. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, but that's a good point, yeah. Um, so there's a, a new one in from David Innes. Um, he asks, um, could not, and maybe this is related to the point you just made, could not um, Medicare Advantage providers be required to report fall-related claims um, to the MDS? Um, yeah, so there could be, um, so there could be something that I'm not familiar with where the MA, um, plans have stricter requirements. Maybe that's what Tamara was, um, uh, was asking about as well. So I'm not familiar with, with the plans and if they have different rules. Mm -hmm. um, and she's right that there is a growing population that's moving you know, towards Medicare Advantage. Um, so that is an important piece to, piece to grapple with. Yeah. Um, I don't know if, there's, if there are different rules there. I'm not heard um. of yeah, so uh, I don't see any more questions in the Q&A, but um, I have uh, another one, kind of a maybe a follow-up a little bit about, about race, because I think that was really such a significant part of your findings, is that mm -hmm. there's variation in, under, in the degree to which there's under-reporting by race. Mm -hmm. um, and so I just, I, maybe I missed it, but I didn't really see that as part of your um, suggestions for policy? How to, 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 how would we specifically address the racial disparity problem, if you have any thoughts about that? Yeah, um, I, I don't really know. It's part of, you know, there's a, it, it fits in with the broader theme of disparities um, in healthcare services, as well as in uh, nursing home care. So what we found is, I was surprised. I didn't expect to um, see a reporting difference by race. That was actually very surprising to me. We didn't look, we weren't looking for it. Mm -hmm. uh, it just kind of came out of the analysis and we were surprised. Um, but I guess it's consistent with um, the other disparities work. I don't know if I, I don't really have a clear, um, I don't have a policy suggestion. I'm not exactly sure what you would, Mm -hmm. what you would do. I don't know if you have ideas, Colleen, um, on how, um, to, how to deal with that. Yeah, I mean, you know, I guess I, I just wondered about if, if we have evidence that there's systematic 
differences in, in reporting that I just wonder if you would, um, you know, put, uh, kind of put those uh, homes that have a higher proportion mm -hmm. of non-white residents kind of on closer watch. Um, yeah. You know that they're sort of under reporting and, and it yeah. goes particularly in the direction that you're concerned about. Right. Um, I mean, one, one kind of clear way to address it would be the to shift over to these claims-based type measures that are just not relying on the nursing homes to right. make those distinctions. Um, so that would kind of, that would actually help alleviate that problem. Um, yeah. yeah. Quite a bit actually. Um, I see another question from Harold. Yeah. Um, Should I read that? Yeah. Out or, um, okay, so Harold asks, um, independent of nursing home quality and reporting metrics, these data might allow predictive analytic investigation to identify subgroups particularly vulnerable to falls or particularly vulnerable to serious health harms when falls occur. Has anyone used these data for that sort of public health work? Yeah, so I'm not, um, so th there's a couple of um, things that I'm hoping to do with this. I don't know if the nursing home data if, if, or the merge data really um, Put it all together um, like that. But one thing I'm hoping to do is once we create these claims based measures, I would love to kind of look back and see what the trajectory of some of these events has actually been. Because mm -hmm. a lot of our knowledge right now is based on what the MDS reports, but it would be interesting to see, you know, using the subjective measure, what has that trend been like. Um, but that's a great um, point that Carol has that we could um, certainly use the uh, use all this data to identify higher risk groups. Um, yeah. There's a there's another paper that um, that I've started working on, which is um, is, is kind of I, I think it's interesting. But um, basically, the you know, the CDC has been very concerned that fall rates have been increasing among the elderly for the past um, 10 years or so, like mm. huge increases. Um, like 30 percent um, increases over the last 10 years. And um, that, that might be happening, but I think that um, it's quite possible that what's going on is the reporting of falls um, in, uh, has actually improved, and that is an ICD coding. So mm -hmm. that's kind of why I had that one slide on um, external cause code reporting, mm -hmm. uh, because uh, that's actually how you identify a fall and reporting of those cause codes, those external cause codes has increased. Mm -hmm. um, so that's kind of another another theme here where you can kind of look back at what's been happening if you use um, these claims based measures. Yeah, yeah, no, it's very interesting. And I wonder about kind of the mm -hmm. And I, I don't know that the, the increase in med, that, that medication use in nursing homes, especially around opiate use, has increased in the last 10 years. I presume maybe it's actually stayed the same or, or at, hopefully in the last five years it's gone down with all the regulation around prescription opiates. But, but that, I wonder, is there any evidence that, you know, um, that that's led to more falls because you're just... Not, what's that? Did you, you said with opioids? Yeah, just yeah. Medic, you know, the, the kind of problems around medication prescribing and over prescribing yeah. and, you know. Yeah, so that's definitely another hypothesis that I've um, seen in the literature that there could be, there could be these increase in falls with the increase in, in, in the opioids. Yeah, so yeah. Nice. Tamara has um, another question. She said, maybe you said this and I missed it, but what other nursing home attributes were associated with low reporting, race um, correlated with so many aspects of nursing home quality. And I would just add yeah. to that because that was one of my questions mm -hmm. as well as I, I, I wondered about ownership and I thought maybe you told us it's not significant and I missed it, but if you could respond about yeah. ownership. I need to, um, well. so, the, so the race effect is um, controlling for dual status and all those other, um, uh, the other measures that were in there. I kind of have to really, to be honest, if you go back to remind myself of exactly what those effects were, um, there are all the other, almost everything in the model was statistically significant. So there is an ownership effect. There is mm -hmm. um, a size piece to it um, that I would have to go back to this. So this is just a handful of the things because it's kind of too much to put up there. Um, so um, 
So, right. So if you look at ownership type uh, relative to being uh, for profit government owned nursing homes do have higher reporting. Um, same thing with nonprofits and uh, well, that's, that's not significant. Um, and then, well, it is in the long stay case. Um, size also mattered. So reporting was higher in the medium and smaller size nursing homes than the large ones. Um, and then for the other pieces, I'd have to really go back to the to the longer table in the paper. But there, but there are a number of other um, effects that were uh, associations that were that mattered. Um, but this race effect was there, kind of controlling for duels, controlling for each of those other pieces. So that could yeah, be I wonder. Um, and this is getting a little bit of tomorrow's point, but did you test for an interaction between ownership and race? Um, I don't recall off the top of my head if we did. Um, I do know we tested a number of interactions. I don't know if we did that particular one or what ended up happening if we did. Um, so it's, it's possible. Um, I find ownership to be um, kind of a, a, an, a confusing measure in that there's just the ownership structures of nursing homes can be so complex that I'm not exactly sure what each of, you know, uh, what these different, because there's a lot of variation even within for-profit, for example, um, that would get, that gets kind of hidden when it's all grouped together. Um, so yeah, so I don't, I don't know what would happen if we interacted those two. But yeah, those, yeah. I was just curious. Maybe the other thing is sort of you know proportion on Medicaid. If you had to measure around that, like proportion of patients. Well, we do that. We do have so that's what the dual status is. Um, so it's not on here, um, but it is. It is something that is. It is in the model, um, and so there's there's actually a dual status at the nursing home level measure, and then at the individual level, which are disaggregated. Um, so I have this vague memory that it actually went in the opposite direction, but I have to check. Hmm. Okay. Confirm that. Um, like let's that. see, there's another question here by um, uh, Jesse New again. Um, can you go over the interpretation from the quote between nursing home race association again? Um, yeah, since we're on the slide. Um, so basically it says that if you hold an individual's race constant and you were to just increase the proportion of black individuals in a home, going from having no black residents to all black residents in the home, regardless of the patient's race, um, is associated with a 25 percentage point lower probability of the fall getting reported. So I hope that's clearer. Yeah, I think that's clear. David um, Ennis had a question. Um, from a policy perspective, auditing is expensive. Uh, Medicare automatically reporting to the MDS files is a few lines of code, I would think. Medicaid is probably more difficult and MA is a regulatory action. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah no, I, I think that makes sense. I think that um, to the, um, well, hold on, maybe I misunderstood. Yeah, I mean, auditing is expensive. And so the, the, mo the more you can do with data-driven approaches, um, the cheaper this all gets and, you know, which can be from, you know, uh, you can even have, this might be more complicated than Medicare set up for, but you can even have systems that are merged so that you can only submit certain types of information. Um, or that there are these kind of checks that are done as you enter information into system uh, validations against other systems. Um, so you can certainly do those kind of software approaches. Um, you can, that's kind of why I was bringing up the modeling to figure out if there's ways to, um, if you are going to, uh, you know, you don't necessarily have to follow through with the audit either. It could be um, a huge source of information to just kind of see where different nursing homes uh, fall relatively if you do if you take into account, um, uh, you know, size of nursing homes, variations within and between nursing homes, and, and do more of like a random effects type modeling to deal with things like that. Yeah, so. yeah. Given that your family is on the on the webinar, I think um, I wonder if they asked you um, 
you know, how do we know what's a good nursing home to go to? How do we choose? What would you tell them? Oh, that's such a good question. <laughs> um, I, I suspect uh, a lot of good decisions are by word of mouth and, you know, hearing from people, you know, in your neighborhood or your community. Um, these, you know, you, there, there are claim space measures, um, some claim space measures on nursing home compare. Um, of course, if a nursing home does poorly on nursing home compare, that's probably a bad sign. Um, it's the ones that look like they're doing well that maybe have inconsistencies between the quality measures and these other ratings that you wanna kind of think about more. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't really, that's, that's about what I would say. Yeah, and would you tell them, given the problems that you've identified in Nursing Home Compare, would you say, don't even go to that site or are there, you know, oh. are there parts of that site that you think are actually helpful to people? I mean, I've only assessed this one measure. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know if I wanna, I'm not, I don't think I can really write off the rest of it. Mm -hmm. um, and, and certainly the other domains are based on other data sources altogether. Mm -hmm. um, so at this point, I wouldn't say that, but I would say that the one measure we did look at, um, which should have been easier to report on than the others, is an indication that we should be worried um, and, and you know, be cautious about how we take in that information. Um, but I, I don't think at this stage I would necessarily write off the entire thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. That would be quite a stretch based on having looked at just one, one quality measure. Yeah. Um, okay, well, I don't see, does it, I don't know if anybody else has any other questions. Are there any um, things we haven't asked about that you think are, you were hoping we would have that, that we should discuss? Um, not, not quite, I think we covered quite a bit here. Um, yeah, I mean, we're just, we, this was our first study on this and we're gonna continue with um, looking at a few of the other measures, see how those perform. Um, yeah, so it's, that sounds know, great to do that, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Good, well, I've really enjoyed the talk. Thanks so much, Thank you. And thanks to everybody for um, joining in and we will, uh, unfortunately not be able to see you next week, but hopefully we will enjoy another conversation next week. Thanks next everybody. Week. Colleen, there's no lecture next week where it's an uh, observance of election day. We want people to go out and vote. Oh, of course. So we're actually yes. skipping next week. We'll see everybody in two weeks. Yes, go vote. If you actually, I hope you've already voted, but. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks everyone. Thank Bye. you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Prachi.